Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad here with 52 Cards. I'm here once again with my buddy Jeremy Griffith. This is kind of a continuation of the last tutorial that we did. Uh, in, in this video, uh, we're going to be going over, it's kind of a gambling move that magicians have adopted in certain ways. Yeah. It's kind of eye candy. It's difficult, but it's well worth the practice, I think. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about this move in general? Right. So uh, what you're going to be learning is a, a basic form of hand mucking. Uh, hand mucking does come from the gambling world. What you're going to be learning here is very much a magic adaption to it, designed for presentation, not really in use of games or anything like that. Um, but it's designed in such a fashion that you could do it very quickly. It creates a very cool and stunning visual and uses some of the knowledge that you gained from the previous tutorial uh, on the lateral palm. Okay, so here we are, the very, very, very beginnings of the idea of mucking. Okay, what I'm going to show you is very, very much based for magicians. This is not uh, something that you should ever try to use in a sort of gambling situation. So if you're ever playing cards with your friends, please don't be a jerk and try to steal their money with bad moves that were never meant to be used at the card table. Um, okay, so that being said, with that proviso out of the way, uh, the first concept that we need to go over is the idea of a gambler's palm. And a gambler's palm is probably one that you may not use a whole lot because of the positioning of it, and it's a little odd to get into. It's normally situational. So, I'm going to show you uh, the difference here. So a classic palm is normally held with the top of the pinky and the base of the thumb, right? And these fingers are just sort of relaxed, and there's a lot of subtleties to this, and I know that 52 Cards has a number of tutorials on stuff like this. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do a gambler's palm, which is significantly lower in the hand. So instead of the top of the pinky and the base of the thumb, we're actually going to hold the card with the base of the pinky and the top of the thumb, okay? so looks like that. And the, the advantage of this palm, uh, one, is it's great if you have small hands, right, because you're utilizing the largest part of your hand to cover the card. You're also squeezing the card so it makes the card slightly thinner. It allows you to extend your hand and if you're really good at it, you can actually spread your fingers a little bit because there's nothing to see. Um, and then the other thing is you can relax your fingers, right? You can bow them in. That's something that would be very hard to do if you were trying to do uh, like a classic palm or a magician's palm. And you can do a lot of equipments, right? This is the idea of motions that sort of inherently prove that your, your hand is empty, right? You can shove things, you can wipe things away. And because those fingers have so much motion, it, it allows for a lot more freedom, which sort of inherently proves you're not holding out anything, even though you are. Now, getting into this palm is a little interesting. So let me show you two ways uh, to get into it. One would be from like a lapping situation. I have a tutorial on 52 cards called the kickback ditch. And one of the questions I got a lot was, what do you do after the card is uh, in your lap? So let's assume this is my leg, right? and the card is sitting there. If I wanted to get this into gambler's palm, all I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use my first finger. I'm going to rest my hand on top of it with this corner going right near this section of my hand. And then I'm going to use my first finger to lift up the card. And I'm going to grip with the base of my pinky and the top of my thumb. And I'm going to bow it against my palm. Okay. And then if I want, I can relax and I can you know, extend my fingers or do whatever. But if that were my leg, I could then come up and I could rest my hand very relaxed at the edge of the table. And now there's, there's nothing to see, right? Because actually the edge of the table is going to keep that against your palm, all right? The other option that you can use is uh, from a previous tutorial that I did on the lateral palm. And the lateral palm, as I taught in that tutorial, is slightly more diagonal, you know, less perfectly lateral like this and more diagonal like this, and it rests against this part. If you wanted to get into gambler's palm from this position here, all you'd have to do is when you rest your hand against the table, you're letting the card sneak against the tips of these fingers, but keeping this corner in the back here against uh, that crotch between your ring finger and your pinky, because that's going to be important that it stays there, right? So you're going to let those rest, and then you're going to let that first finger help you get it back into position as you curl your hand, and now when you extend your fingers, you've got a gambler's palm. So again, you're in, you're in my style that I taught of uh, the lateral palm, right? You're at the table, and the only thing is you're going to now 
that rests against the fingertips, but you're keeping this corner right here back in that section. And then this first finger is going to sneak it back and the thumb is going to pick it up. And now you're in gambler's palm, okay? So get used to this, right? This, this particular palm, it takes a while for you to like get used to doing things. You know, uh, magician's palm, a lot of people are used to doing that. This one is going to take a little time. But once you get it, now one of the funnest things that you can learn to do with it is mucking. So I'm going to teach you a slight variation of what's known as a George Joseph muck. Uh, George Joseph is sort of infamous for writing one of the only books specifically dedicated uh, to mucking. And this is one that he kind of claims as it, but it's actually more of a magician muck. The positioning of your hand and the motions is more magic than gambling. Um, so I'll teach you the slow way and then I'll teach you the fast way. So the slow way is actually done as if you were peeking a card. So this is actually sort of a fun thing that you can do. Say this is the card, huh, ten of spades, that I had lapped, and this is some miscellaneous card that I've set out that I'm calling a prediction, right? Let's say I've lapped a previous selected card. If I wanted to switch this out, all I have to do is when I go to look at the card, right, I'm going to take my hand up, I'm going to release the pressure from my thumb and let the card hit the table. And then I'm going to let it slide under. As my thumb comes out, I'm going to lift this, this corner right here. I'm going to act like I'm taking a look at the card and I'm going to let that one slide out from the position. And then I'm going to push it forward. And this one's going to come back in gambler's palm. Now, because of the positioning, because this is done slightly slower, this is one that you can do over and over again. Um, I don't recommend it, but yes, it is something that you can do because you're returning back to gambler's palm, which means you can muck again. Um, and this is actually pretty good for practice, right? You come in and then you go. Now, um, the reason I'm not, you know, horribly keen on that one is because it requires a lot of motion from the first finger um, to try to get back into gambler's palm when you don't really need to. So what you can do instead is when you slide under you don't have to necessarily get it back into gambler's palm. You can actually just sort of slide it with your hand, right? Especially if, if this card is no longer important, then you just lap that one again, right? Drag it off the end of the table where your fingers are like at the edge and just let this kind of ride off the edge of the table, right? And what's nice about that, this is the one that can make this go uh, exceedingly fast. Um, and this is where there's a, big difference between uh, doing what comes next and a classic sort of George Joseph muck. Um, so this can be done as a very visual change, right? I do this a lot when I'm on Instagram uh, where I've got a card and I want to swap it out in a very, very visual way. I'm doing sort of a sliding muck, right? This, this would normally be, say you had a double, right? You put the double down as though it were one. I'm essentially doing this except in mucking form. I'm dragging this top card off as I push that one forward and I'm letting that card fall off the edge of the table. Except I'm doing this from a gambler's palm, right? So let's say I wanna swap out the 10 of spades with the 10 of diamonds or vice versa. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to sweep in and I'm going to get it to the point where this card is actually just letting this top card right up onto it. And then instead of trying to make the distinction and grab it with my first finger, I'm just going to slide it off as though it's that double, right? So at speed, you can do this really fast. And it makes for a very, very cool visual change, right? Even, even from my perspective, even though you know what's going on, it's still sort of cool. So when you're first starting out, you may need to bring the card a little higher, just so that way your hand is able to cover, right, that grab. But as you progress in this, as you do this more often, you can get it closer and closer to that card. Now, because you're just sliding it, um, there's an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is that you've got the speed, right? That's a, that's a very, very fast change. The disadvantage is, is you're sliding this. Right? So if you want to get it back up into gambler's palm, you're going to have to do a separate motion to get it back up in there. Um, 
and that's okay if if you want to do that the other you know thing is you can just lap it just pull it off the edge of the table um but the nice part about this when you learn to do this at speed right this hot swap there uh is that it's very visually stunning uh which is great especially like for me when i do a lot of things on instagram that sort of platform lends itself to very visual changes so i hope you enjoyed that i hope you enjoyed that sort of quick uh tutorial on the gambler's palm i do suggest that you use it i suggest you explore it uh, try to find different uses for it and uh, i hope you enjoy mucking <laughs>